So, uh, the first in this particular line is uh, the Flixbro UK cyclohexane disaster which took place in uh, 1st June 1974. Now, this particular uh, accident um, is uh, uh, most disastrous accident uh, uh, in terms of fire and explosion. So, uh, let us have a look about this uh, particular accident. Now, before we start this particular accident in terms of case study, we will have an introduction of the plant. Then we will discuss about the, the process uh, protocol or process methodology. Then what were the shortcomings and uh, to the best of our effort, we will try to give a proper accident investigation. So, let us have an introduction about uh, this uh, Flixbro plant. This was uh, an explosion at a chemical plant uh, that was owned by Nipro UK Limited and uh, occurred in Flixbro, England on Saturday 1st of June 1974 about uh, 4.53 pm. Now, this particular plant was in operation since 1964. So, uh, uh, why this particular accident took place, we will go into the detail in due course of uh, time, but uh, a temporary pipe uh, which containing the cyclohexane caught on uh, fire and burst and uh, that uh, blast was uh, equivalent to al almost 5 tons of uh, TNT. So, it was a still warm sunlight of uh, afternoon one moment a blast of uh, nightmarish intensely as a giant plant blew up and uh, blotted out uh, the sun. That was a Humberside police report. So, you can see these are the some of the photograph of uh, at that particular time. Uh, now, let us have a look about uh, the Flixbro petrochemical plant. The Flixbro plant was uh, owned by Nipro Limited, which was virtually demolished by an explosion uh, of Warwick dimensions on afternoon of 1st June 1974. Uh, this explosion was uh, initially estimated to be equivalent of uh, to the force arising from 15 to 45 tons TNT. Uh, later on, it was uh, termed as 5 ton, uh, 5 TNT. So, this was uh, due to ignition of a vapor cloud uh, which formed when pressurized cyclohexane escaped from a reactor and vaporized and subsequently it was ignited. So, on site, 28 people they were killed and 36 injured. Now, if uh, uh, remember, if the explosion had occurred during the week, there would have been many more casualties uh, because uh, uh, during the working hour, there may be certain people in the, the offices and other general shift. Now, let us have a look about the Flixbro site. This uh, was a 60 acre Nipro plant uh, was owned by Dutch state mines, 55 percent and national court board, they were having the stake of 45 percent. Now, this work was uh, situated on a low lying ground of uh, to the east of the river Trent. Now, this is um, the Flixbro site um, and uh, was this particular uh, plant was surrounded by uh, farms and fields uh, uh, with uh, fortunately a low level of uh, population. Now, this particular plant involved in production of uh, caprolactam that is uh, H2NCH2 5 COH, which is a raw material for the manufacturing of uh, nylon 6 and that is from the benzene. So, this is uh, the Flixbro um, site. Here, the main uh, problem took place. This was the caprolactam plant. There was a certain loading and loading operation, the production arena, acid plant, pyrite sites, laboratory, main control room and that was the work boundary, you can see and uh, this was the, the, the cyclohexane oxidation plant, bypass line, etc. Now, let us have a brief discussion about uh, the process. The plant was built for the production of a caprolactam, which is a basic raw material for the production of nylon 6. Now, the process involves the oxidation of uh, uh, cyclohexane with air 
to produce a mixture of cyclohexanol and cyclohexanone. And then this caprolactam is in C2 converted into the caprolactam which in terms produces nylon 6. We will discuss the reaction methodology later on. Now, this is the simplified diagram of a cyclohexane oxidation plant. Here, they, they were having 6 different reactors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and uh, uh, the cyclohexane uh, they, they were injecting from the first plant with the help of an air sparger and the compressed air is, was supplied from uh, the air supply utility line and uh, they are uh, these reactors are connected in series. Now, uh, whenever there is a, uh, a problem then what they used to do they used to draw one reactor from problematic reactor from the main battery and then they used to repair and then they reinsert it. So, there are certain and every reactor was connected with the expansion bellows like this to overcome any kind of pressure imbalance. Now, the, the product whatever product they coming out from the after reaction they use to the pump and then separator water is separated and they sent to the distillation section and uh, uh, this is uh, subjected to the cyclohexanone and cyclohexanol recovery and whatever left behind this unreacted cy cyclohexane it is sent back to after scrubbing it is sent back to the main, react, um, uh, main reactor battery. Now, uh, the disaster uh, the, the disaster took place I mean um, just uh, you can say whatever they were near misses or um, uh, the some faulty operations. So, we have enlisted all those things in these uh, particular slides. So, two months prior to the explosion the cyclohexane was discovered by leaking to the reactor number 5. This was the main problematic reactor. So, the cyclohexane and they were discovered from uh, to be leaking from reactor 5. Now, so, it was decided that the reactor number 5 um, is to be removed for inspection and a temporary bypass. This was a temporary bypass. The temporary bypass assembly to be constructed to connect the reactor number 4 to reactor number 6 while repairs were made. So, this is the basic uh, um, repairing line or section being carried out. So, on uh, the 1st of uh, uh, June 1974 at uh, 4.53 pm, the temporary bypass line which was connected in between reactor number 4 and reactor number 6 uh, was ruptured. So, within a minute about 40 tons of because each reactor was having the capacity of uh, 20 tons each. So, within a minute about 40 tons of the cyclohexane it was leaked from the pipe and formed a vapor cloud uh, that when coming in contact with an ignition source exploded and completely destroying the plant because they were having a high they were, they were having low boiling point. So, um, uh, and the source of ignition was having the sufficient energy to ignite that particular vapor cloud. And sometimes when this vapor cloud usually it is termed as unconfined vapor cloud. So, whenever this type of scenario happens then uh, practically the ignition source they are supposed to be available everywhere. Now, uh, let us uh, have a discussion about the scale of accident. So, total casualty is 28 people they were killed and 36 people were seriously injured. All the records and charts uh, for the startup were destroyed and the fire were remained burning in the area for over 10 days. So, you can imagine that um, how much uh, uh, inventory was there in uh, that particular plant because they were practically unable to um, extinguish the fire for almost 10 days. So, the blast uh, was having so much impact that it can be heard for 30 miles away. Uh, the property damage they extended over wide area and that is more than 1800 buildings within 3 miles radius of the site was damaged. So, there, these are the again uh, couple of photographs of that particular time. Now, you can see that 
about uh, the, the various newspaper clipping and uh, accident sites in these figure. So, this is uh, the scenario of uh, vapor cloud explosion and the daily mail they reported that survivor returned to a funeral pyre. So, this was the, um, the, the whole scenario. Now, let us have a, a product description. So, um, the raw material for that particular caprolactam production was cyclohexene. It is having the formula of C6H12 molecular weight 84 and boiling point is um, 81 degrees Celsius. Now, this cyclohexane is a volatile liquid uh, with a low boiling point at uh, ambient condition. It is um, something like uh, petrol. It is having the liquid density 780 kilogram per meter cube and a vapor density uh, is uh, 2.4 kilogram per meter cube at atmospheric condition or atmospheric pressure. So, the liquid is lighter than water uh, while the vapor is heavier than air in common with the many hydrocarbons. This is a very common phenomenon for many hydrocarbons. Now, uh, cyclohexane um, is uh, having the following uh, thermodynamic properties like a specific heat is uh, 1.93 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Ratio of a specific heat that is gamma is equal to 1.087. Latent heat of evaporation uh, is uh, 360 kilojoule per kilogram and flammability in air of the gas is uh, 5.3 to 8.3. In other words, you can say the LFL and UFL. Now, this is uh, the production protocol of uh, nylon 6 from benzene. This is the classical route and they were supposed to follow this classical route. Now, benzene is uh, hydrogenated to give the cyclohexane and this cyclohexane is uh, subsequently oxidized to give the cyclohexanol L, uh, and this cyclohexanol uh, L, uh, then is uh, further oxidized to give the cyclohexanone. And in presence of NH2OH and H2SO4, the cyclohexanone is converted into cyclohexanone oxim, which is subsequently converted into uh, uh, caprolactam with H2SO4 and uh, NH4 whole twice SO4 ammonium sulfate is a uh, is a byproduct, and this uh, caprolactam is converted into nylon 6. So, this is uh, the, the production stream of uh, nylon 6 from benzene root and uh, the plant was having substantial quantity of benzene uh, within its uh, periphery. Now, the benzene um, under high pressure it gives the cyclohexane and cyclohexane with ammonia and uh, oxygen the cyclohexanone. So, ammonia is again used for the production of cyclohexanone and uh, um, one advisory is that oxygen needs to be carefully controlled. Now, why oxygen needs to be carefully controlled? The reason is uh, cyclohexane is extremely um, flammable and you are supplying oxygen. So, sometimes it may happen that uh, the if you are not uh, controlling oxygen so that it can meet the minimum oxygen concentration demand and uh, um, it is extremely you can say it may become the extremely disastrous. Then this cyclohexanone plus oleum H2SO4 gives the caprolactam and caprolactam upon hydrolysis it gives the nylon 6. So, this is uh, the, the basic stream and this is uh, the oxidation of cyclohexane. Now, the fixed flow uh, petrochemical plant was involved in the production of cyclohexanone, a precursor of the manufacture of uh, nylon. The raw material cyclohexane, this was oxidized uh, to cyclohexanone ne, by injecting air in presence of a catalyst. So, the process of oxidation is usually slow and it was decided to use the 6 stirred reactor in series with the product from the first overflowing into the second and so and so on. So, if you recall the, the, uh, the production protocol, so these 6 reactors they were uh, in series and the overflow of the, uh, the pre uh, previous reactor is subjected to the inlet of the, the, the uh, next reactor in line and in such a way. So, this is uh, the you can say the the, uh, the flex bro flow sheet here the um, this was a cooling scrubber then the, the heat exchanger the 6 reactors they were in series they are connected with the 20 inch bypass line. They, now, here the the uh, reactor number 5 
uh, is uh, out of the business because of the some repair and there are other previous sections just which we have already discussed. Now, uh, since uh, to meet the reaction kinetics, they were having the six reactor in series. Now, to do this, uh, the reactors, uh, they were mounted on a platform arranged in a series step such that uh, uh, so, uh, each step is having the height difference of 0.355 meter with uh, another one. Now, the good reaction kinetics, uh, they dictate that the cyclohexane in the reactor be maintained at an elevated temperature of 155 degrees Celsius. So, chemical kinetics plays a very vital role for any kind of yield or conversion things. Now, this temperature is above the boiling point at the atmospheric pressure. So, it um, to hold the liquid, um, uh, uh, to hold the, all the contents in the liquid state, the reactor had to be operated at 9 bar pressure. Because remember, the cyclohexane is having uh, the boiling uh, point 81 degrees Celsius. Now, since reactors, they are operating at temperature higher than this uh, particular temperature and the operating temperature was 155 degrees Celsius. So, they need to be put at a, a higher pressure. So, this higher pressure and higher temperature, this is um, this was a main reason, these two parameters were the main reason for this particular reactor apart from the mechanical or deliberated failure. Now, this is uh, the actual uh, photograph of the reactor train or reactor battery in the course of during the course of uh, re, um, erection. Now, this was the reactor which was uh, taken out uh, for the repair and this was the sketch of the bypass pipe. So, there was a reactor number 4 and this was a reactor number 5, uh, reactor number 6. So, they were connected through this uh, bypass pipe. Now, uh, you can have a more closer look of this uh, a particular uh, a reactor battery. So, these were the six reactor and this was the off gas uh, manifold and this was the problematic reactor. So, uh, sometimes in uh, March 1974, the cooling water was uh, sprayed on the outside of reactor number 5 to quench a minor leak uh, from a valve. Now, the water was uh, contaminated with the chemicals uh, which corroded the mild steel casing uh, of the reactor. Now, this problem you can say this is uh, the near miss. Now, the steel shell was under a tensile hoop stress and due to this uh, the contained pressure which uh, uh, would have accelerated the damage. Now, this phenomena is known as uh, the stress corrosion. So, this correction had to the had the result that more of the mechanical load was transferred to the stainless steel liner which was then overstressed and uh, it in turn cracked. So, cyclohexane vapors they begin to leak from the reactor again you can say this is the miss. Now, the first lesson of this would be uh, that the system could leak as a result of an external corrosion that is presumably not considered to due to the lagging. So, sometimes it may refer as that uh, this is lagging, but it is not. Now, uh, just because of this particular thing, this reactor had to be shut down and removed from the service for repair. Now, to keep the process running, it was decided uh, uh, to fabricate a temporary bypass pipe to join reactor number 4 to reactor number 6. Uh, now, a poor mechanical design uh, of the bypass pipe was the reason for the disaster. Now, remember both the reactors, they were pressurized and they were at an elevated temperature. See, remember the reactor temperature was uh, 155 degrees Celsius and both of them were at 9 bar. So, whenever you are applying such kind of a modification, you need to go ahead with the pressure test. So, which was not performed because sometimes it may have because whenever the content moves from this place, this reactor to this one, then there may be a chances of any fluctuation. So, uh, a 20 inch uh, uh, diameter temporary uh, bypass line or jack knifed this is uh, like this where the uh, the pipelines they are supported so jack knifed 
and failed under the thermal uh, expansion stress. Now, because uh, both of the reactors they were operated at a higher temperature, so again the thermal expression, uh, expansion test or stress test need to be performed. So, about 42 uh, of uh, 120 tons of cyclohexane escaped. Uh, into the congested reactor supported structure. Now, the, the jack knife work like this. So, so they, they approximated around uh, 40 to 100 tons or 120 tons of cyclohexane they ex um, escaped into this arena. So, within 2 minutes of the vapor, uh, the minutes the vapor cloud ignited and detonation class of vapor cloud explosion uh, took place. Now, this is uh, the schematic view of uh, this indicate the basis of the incident. Remember, this was uh, running at 155 degrees Celsius and again the temperature of 155 degrees Celsius, 9 bar pressure and it is also again having the 9 bar pressure. So, the entire content and when this, uh, this was uh, uh, broken, this bypass line was broken then uh, you may assume that uh, the entire material they may come out because uh, every reactor was uh, running under pressure. Now, uh, let us have a look about this uh, the defective pressure vessel that is uh, the uh, pressure vessel number 5. Now, this failed pressure vessel taken out of the service. Uh, now, the cracked uh, propagation near the flange square hold are where the material has been removed for examination. So, this is again uh, the original figure where this uh, reactor uh, number 5 was supposed to be there. Now, this uh, you can see that uh, before the explosion, the plant was having this type of uh, thing and this is after the explosion. Now, this is uh, you can uh, see uh, the view of uh, uh, the entire plant arena after the incidence. So, this one is the main fire zone and you can see that the entire plant was destroyed at the moment. Now, let us have a look about the bypass line because it was the main culprit of that uh, particular incident. The details of the support of the cracked uh, mm, bypass pipe, the pipe was supported by scaffolding poles or you can say the jackknife uh, system. So, as pressure built up, uh, the bellows displaced vertically downward at one end and the failure occurred by screwing the, the rupture of the material welds. So, they just welded the things uh, in a uh, non-professional manner. So, the bypass had not been uh, properly designed and effect of some axial forces apparently they overlooked. The liquid escaped and formed a vapor cloud which ignited in the explosive manner. Now, this is uh, the reactor battery and they try to um, just extinguish the, the fire. Now, um, uh, the explosion hypothesis, uh, they suggested that the sequence of the event is unclear, is still unclear. The two hypotheses uh, were considered uh, in the inquiry report because it is an, this is an outcome of uh, the accident investigation. Uh, that was a failure of an 8 inch pipe and separately and then ne next is the failure of uh, the 20 inch bypass uh, as the pressure was increased uh, as the plant was being brought fully online after the fitting of the bypass. So, see again uh, it seems that uh, the plant officials they were under stress. So, in case uh, if uh, you are removing any reactor then to meet out the reaction kinetics and to meet out uh, the requirement of a conversion or a yield, then they were forced to put the, uh, the um, uh, scenario to bypass the chemical kinetics uh, things. Like now, the original chemical kinetics they suggest that uh, you need to maintain the reaction temperature at around 155 degrees Celsius under 9 bar pressure. But whenever you are uh, forcing towards the higher conversion, then that means you are compelled to alter all those uh, process parameters. So, this uh, disaster was caused by poor design and inadequate structural support with the flexible uh, jackknife type of scaffolding of a temporary 20 inch diameter bypass pipe. 
Now, the structural calculation for the bypass uh, were not uh, carried out. Such calculations might have an anticipated the failure of mechanism. So, again uh, they have uh, you can say okay, they have missed this particular aspect or a very important aspect of uh, the, ex, uh, the process. Now, there was uh, inadequate recognition by the management that a calculation and a proper pressure test was necessary for the bypass because uh, bo all the reactors they were under uh, 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 high pressure. So, uh, there was a necessity to carry out for the bypass and there was no work engineer employed at the work at the time. And there was too much reliance on the chemical engineer in the management team rather than the mechanical engineer. So, chemical engineer they were just in involved to alter the reaction kinetics or uh, process parameters and they, uh, they can uh, you can say that they, they were incompetent to carry out all kind of uh, pressure temperature calculations for that particular pressure vessel. So, the information on the conditions necessary for the formation of large flammable vapor uh, layers and the consequences of their ignition was not at all available. So, they did not carry out this type of uh, analysis and it was very fortunate that the plant was not located in an urban area. Uh, now, there are certain observations, the investigations uh, revealed that the part of the plant including the failed reactor had over the years suffered from the nitrate stress uh, corrosion. Now, the inquiry suggested that the training of engineers should be more broadly based both academically and practically so that they had some knowledge of uh, other branches of engineering. Now, this is very important had the chemical engineers the, the, uh, the knowledge of uh, the, uh, the stress test or the pressure imbalance and trust then they, uh, they might have in a position to compel uh, the fabricators to perform such type of test to avoid such a scenario. Now, there were certain process design flaw. The cyclohexane in the reactor was in a liquid state at a temperature of uh, 74 degree Celsius about such atmospheric pressure boiling point. Hence, any loss of containment uh, would produce large scale of flashing and escape of uh, flammable vapor. Now, the cyclohexane and the benzene both of them they were stored in a large quantity. So, inventory problem was also there in that particular thing. Now, this was the structure of the scaffold and this you can see the the the, the scaffold which was supported uh, the reactor number 4 to reactor number uh, reactor number um, 6. Now, this was the bypass uh, uh, pipe geometry. This was a reactor 4 and this was a reactor 6. They were supported by these bellows and the pipe reactor flanges and uh, the distance was uh, almost 355 meter just uh, to suggest the reaction kinetics and the distance of these two reactors remember reactor 4 to reactor 6 was 6.5 meter. Now, these are the, the pictures shows that a reactor 4 and 6 after the accident. So, you can see these are the, the openings where the things were connected. So, this was the reaction reactor number 6 and this was the reactor number 4. Now, this is uh, the bypass pipe after the, the accident. So, you can see the damage over here. Uh, the consequences are 28 plant people they, uh, uh, were killed, 53 people were wounded and uh, required medical treatment, almost 1800 houses they were damaged with, uh, in the rural area beyond the plant fence line. So, when uh, the accident investigation took place and then team overviewed the entire scenario and they found out that a temporary pipe was fitted between two sequential reactor in a plant and that was oxidizing the cyclohexane at an elevated temperature under pressure. Now, this uh, pipe was not designed properly and the mechanical load acting on the pipe were not uh, uh, correctly identified. In particular, the pipe was subjected to the large bending loads for which uh, it had not been designed. Now, you can see in this particular figure that uh, uh, whenever the, the flow is transferred from this way, so the load would be on the higher side of this particular 
pipe junction. Now the pipe uh, broken down uh, open at a thermal expansion bellow fitting in the, uh, in the line, the large amount of liquid cyclohexane escaped to the atmosphere through the rupture pipe and vaporized because uh, they were having the higher temperature and uh, the excess pressure. So, the vapor cloud found an ignition source and a fireball ensued. Now, uh, so they recommended couple of things uh, uh, before uh, they proceed further. The changes to a design uh, should be overseen and authorized by the properly qualified person. Remember, there was no mechanical engineer involved for uh, carrying out any kind of uh, pressure or temperature based calculation. So, they suggested. Now, there was an utmost requirement to carry out the systematic search for the possible cause of the problem before any modification process being done. Because the chemical engineers, they were forced to carry out uh, the higher conversion. Now, knowledge and understanding of the hazard of the process might have prevented the accident from occurring. Now, this was again important uh, point to note the because they were having the large sized inventory and for all flammable materials like cyclohexane, benzene and uh, because uh, they were carrying out the oxidation reaction. So, the source of oxygen was adequately available at the point of time. So, uh, uh, in a synchronized manner, uh, the accident uh, investigation team, they categorize the things uh, in event leading to the incident. Now, two months before the accident, uh, the reactor number 5 was decommissioned and uh, because they were found it to be leaking, a 6 feet long crack there uh, in that particular uh, reactor was uh, developed a water hose uh, stream was directed to crack uh, uh, to the crack to cool and quench the sm small uh, cyclohexane leak and uh, this cooling water contained nitrates brine uh, just to have uh, a thermodynamic calculation so which can encourages the stress corrosion of uh, certain carbon steel so, thus by trying to relieve the situation, the quenching was actually acting as a promoter of uh, corrosion. So, ultimately uh, they were uh, in a, uh, they were decided to uh, uh, decommission that particular reactor from the service and they were trying to repair that particular reactor in due course of time. See, there was no experienced worker work manager available on the site to at the time of uh, removal of uh, reactor number 5. Uh, the previous work manager which was who was a very good maintenance engineer with the 25 year experience had good job uh, because an anticipated promotion was given to an another outside person. So, this may be the reason when we were discussing about uh, the accident investigation. So, human value point is there. Now, uh, this event could not be happened as uh, there was no experienced mechanical engineer on site. Now, those remaining uh, decided to fast track on scratch pad uh, type of solution uh, to intend the bypass. So, they just uh, sketched the full scale bypass line in chalk on the maintenance floor and that was highly undesirable because when you are having uh, such a high uh, sensitive plant uh, with you. They were not carried out any stress analysis calculation uh, on that particular bypass connection. Now, uh, because they were so much uh, under the stress, they, they, the bypass line was quickly installed and the plant put into startup mode as quickly as possible. Now, shortly after startup, the bypass line failed causing 40,000 to 100,000 pounds of cyclohexane to leak into the confined space of the reactor support structure. The reason was that initially the, uh, the maybe the, the plant is was having the low pressure and initially when they were raising the, the pressure, there was a pressure fluctuation uh, that could have lead the uh, rupture of that particular pipeline. So, within 2 minutes the vapor cloud that wet vapor cloud exploded. Now, uh, we can learn uh, several lessons uh, from this particular uh, um, flex blow explosion. The main root cause of this inc uh, incident was to uh, the use of the cooling water with the nitrates to quench the cyclohexane leak on the reactor. So, the whenever you are compelled to use this type of cooling water carry out the stress analysis. 
another root cause was installing a bypass line or any line for that mat uh, matter without any kind of stress analysis and that is the recipe of the disaster. The third root cause was the management must recognize when they are uh, vulnerable uh, to a critical manpower change. So, if you recall the maintenance engineer, he was forced to quit the job because the promotion was given to some outsider. So, that was a human value task. Uh, the more control uh, is required to conduct the good engineering practices once the plant is up and uh, running. Uh, that means, uh, at, that at that particular point of time, the workers they were not uh, well trained because they carry out all kind of bypass analysis uh, uh, through chalk in, on the maintenance floor. The poor location and a poor construction of the control room because it was collapsed at the time of uh, vapor cloud explosion. The plant was too congested in the design state, uh, stage. So, if you can see the previous figure that was extremely congested because and uh, remember the plant was having the involvement of a extremely uh, highly dangerous flammable vapors. So, uh, they must minimize uh, the hazardous inventories. Uh, at the time of accident, they were having uh, a very large quantity of uh, hazardous inventories like acid, uh, benzene, uh, cyclohexanes, etc. Uh, there were certain failure analysis need to be carried out like check pipe work which was not corroded, bellows they were not corrected this specification because as a protocol whenever you are replacing anything. And uh, uh, then the replacement should carry the same type of specification. So, there was a lack of backup isolation walls, uh, although it was not necessary at the time because all these X reactors they were connected in series. Uh, incompatible substances stored in the same warehouse uh, when they were not supposed to be there. Inadequate smoke detection and firefighting facilities were there at the time of accident in the FlixPro plant. There was a time delay uh, of 50 minutes before accident reported to emergency services. Uh, there was an inadequate uh, identification of potentially hazardous impurities and hazard marking was also not uh, checked on the tanks, driver documentation not checked all the uh, causes of accident. The reason was that because the source of uh, ignition was unknown and uh, it, uh, practically investigation team failed to find out the source of ignition from which that vapor cloud was ignited. So, in this particular uh, uh, module, we had a discussion about the Flixbrew accident and a proper accident investigation and what was the failure of uh, uh, that particular uh, 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 Flixbrew uh, explosion. So, uh, in the subsequent uh, slide, uh, subsequent module, we will discuss about uh, the SWESO that is related to the toxicological studies, Bhopal again it was related to the toxicological studies and a Jaipur accident. Thank you very much.